Welcome to this brief educational video on interlocutory injunctions in intellectual property litigation. Interlocutory injunctions play an important role in intellectual property law. An interlocutory injunction is a temporary remedy that is an order sought between commencement of a case and the trial. In many cases, it takes a long period of time to reach a final decision, and an interlocutory injunction, which is normally a negative order, may prevent permanent damage from occurring to the applicant. An interlocutory injunction has many important functions in intellectual property cases. It may prevent parties from using a trademark, selling a product, or utilising a patent, among many other things, and temporarily protects the applicant from serious damages. Successful application for an interlocutory injunction will have to satisfy two elements. The plaintiff must be able to show they have a prima facie case, and show that the balance of convenience is in their favour. Courts will consider these elements in conjunction with each other, not in isolation, to reach a decision on the application. Due to the importance of these elements in the final decision of a case, winning or losing an application for an interlocutory injunction can have a very serious effect on the case at trial. Courts were long divided on how to rule on injunction cases. Beecham set a precedence for the two aforementioned elements. American Cyanamid set the standard for a serious question, then ABC and O'Neill finally set out the system which we currently use today, highly dependent on the decision from Beecham. In ABC and O'Neill, the High Court held that for a prima facie case element to be satisfied, that there needs to be a serious question to be tried as to the plaintiff's legal or equitable entitlement to relief, and that there is a sufficient likelihood on the current evidence that the applicant would be entitled to relief at trial. O'Neill confirmed that the prima facie case definition in Beecham did not mean that the applicant must show it is more probable than not to succeed at trial, but there must simply be a sufficient likelihood of success. How strong that likelihood needs to be depends on the rights asserted by the plaintiff and is considered in the balance of convenience. When a court is deciding on who the balance of convenience favours, it considers multiple criterion. For the balance to favour the applicant, they must establish that the defendant has the ability to cause the claim damage. That damage must not be insufficient, and it must outweigh the possible damage to the defendant. The damages incurred without an interlocutory injunction must be irreparable, so relief in damages at trial must not provide an adequate remedy. It will be considered whether a defendant will have the resources to pay future damages in a worst case scenario. If it can be shown that the plaintiff has delayed the application for injunction, this will also affect the balance of consideration. Interlocutory injunctions in IP cases can be very effective, but can also put the applicant at a severe disadvantage if the case at hand is unsuccessful. If successful, an injunction can provide quick relief to the applicant, stopping the infringement and requisite damage instantly. However, because damages are sometimes hard to quantify, and the cost of litigation is high, a plaintiff must make sure they have a strong case before applying for an interlocutory injunction. Most importantly, due to the impact the decision can have at the trial, an applicant will need to make sure that they have satisfied both elements of the action sufficiently before proceeding with an injunction as failing to attain an injunction can quite often lead to a loss in the case at trial. I hope you've enjoyed this brief educational video on interlocutory injunctions.